Squeaks, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I see. You're looking at a map. Squeaks has been learning about animals that lived a long time ago. Creatures like the giant woolly mammoth or the saber-toothed Smilodon. Now he's trying to picture the places where they lived. A map is a great way to do that, Squeaks. A map shows us pictures of the land all across the Earth. We can see the green and brown parts that are land and the blue parts that are water. Say, do you know where the fort is on the map? <laughs> We're here in North America. North America is one of Earth's continents. Continents are Earth's big pieces of land. Most people say we have seven continents, Australia, Africa, Antarctica, Europe, Asia, North America, which we've just seen, and South America, which is right here. <laughs> Ooh, you're right. That skinny piece of land does look kind of like a bridge connecting North America to South America. And it kind of is a bridge made of land. That skinny little land bridge is one of the reasons that we see all the cool animals we do around the fort, like foxes and even mountain lions. <laughs> Here, let me explain how one tiny piece of land gives us so many cool creatures. About 65 million years ago, when the dinosaurs went extinct, North and South America looked like this. They weren't touching and there was no land bridge. There were certain animals in North America and other animals in South America. And unless they were really good flyers or swimmers and could cross a lot of ocean, that's where they stayed. But then things changed. A continent is a huge, heavy piece of land, but it can move. <laughs> oh, you'd like to see them have a race to see who's fastest? Well, you'd be watching for quite a while. Continents move so slowly that you or I would never notice the difference, even if we watched our whole lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is very, very slow, but very slowly over a very long time, changes can happen. North and South America moved close enough together for that little land bridge to form. And when that happened, things began to change in both places. Animals did what animals will do. They moved around looking for things like food and places to live. About three million years ago, some of the animals in North America moved over that skinny piece of land into South America and some animals in South America crossed into North America. This switch was so important that scientists gave this movement a name, the Great American Interchange. <laughs> right, an interchange. That word just means the animals on the two continents swapped places. Some went north to south and some went south to north. <laughs> Animals that moved from North America to South America included ancient kinds of foxes, horses, llamas, and big cats like jaguars and pumas. Bears moved across the bridge into South America too. Big ones, much bigger than even our biggest bears today. When standing on all four legs, the short-faced bear was about as tall as an average grown-up. If they stood up on two legs, they were about as tall as an African elephant. <laughs> it would be cool to see one, but unfortunately we can't because these huge bears became extinct. That means they died out, so they're no longer around today, like the dinosaurs or saber-toothed cats. <laughs> Ooh, good question! Squeaks wants to know how we know these animals existed. We know these ancient animals lived in South America because we found fossils of them there. Fossils are traces left behind by ancient creatures, either body parts like bones and teeth or other signs like footprints and even poop. Fossils also give us a good idea of what these animals looked like. For example, they showed us that the snouts on short-faced bears were shorter than the snouts on bears we see today. Shorter than on most bears anyway, because one cousin of the short-faced bear still exists. And guess where they live? That's okay. South America. These animals, called spectacled bears, are much smaller than their ancient relatives, but they still have a short snout. They're probably related to the large, short-faced bears that crossed the land bridge into South America. 
Good question, Squeaks. What about animals that went the other way? There were some giant animals that made the trip from South America to here in North America. Glyptodonts were a lot like giant armadillos. Some kinds were over four meters long, about half the length of a school bus, and weighed as much as a rhinoceros. <laughs> they had a hard shell that looked like a turtle shell and other bony parts that acted as armor. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine carrying so much armor around all the time. Another animal that moved as part of the Great American Interchange were the giant sloths. <laughs> I love sloths too. They're super adorable with the way they hang upside down and move so slowly. The sloths we see today are less than a meter long and spend almost their entire lives in trees. But the sloths that moved into North America millions of years ago were about the size of elephants. They were too large and too heavy to hang out in trees. Instead, they walked on the ground using their huge claws to knock down branches and dig up roots to eat. <laughs> yes, these animals are also extinct. About 10,000 years ago, they got some new neighbors, humans. Some scientists think that humans might have hunted some of the sloths and glyptodonts because they needed food. Scientists also think that big changes in Earth's temperature and weather made it too hard for some animals to find food and places to live. I know I'd like to meet a giant sloth too, but at least thanks to fossils, we know a little bit about them. And it's so amazing that thanks to the super slow movements of continents, we got to see all of these animals live in brand new places. I have an idea. Let's look up some museums online and see if any of them have exhibits about giant sloths. Thanks for joining us. If you want to have fun with me, Squeaks, and all our friends, you can subscribe to SciShow Kids, and we'll see you next time here at the fort.